Hello, hello to you, my fellow printed dweebs. You're very welcome to another episode of Community News from 3D Jake. All the news from the community and what's going on with us too. I'm joining you from the 3D Jake office in the center of Graz in southern Austria, a country where the only word you really need to learn is oida. Here's what's going on in the 3D printing right now. So first up is ba -ba -ba -ba, Prusa. We now have Prusa in the shop and we have the Mark IV S kit and assembled in stock right now. And the MMU3, the SL1SB, the Prusa XL, Core 1 kit and assembled will all be in stock in the coming weeks. I am very excited to get my hands on the Core 1 and there will be testing and a product breakdown coming soon. But we're not just getting printers and devices, we are getting Prusa's Buddy 3D ABS PTG and PLA. That means 41 new filaments coming to the shop really soon. It has been a long time coming and I'm very happy about this. And in other Prusa news, actually we have a lot of Prusa news this time, Prusa Slicer 2.9.1 is in alpha and is coming with features such as interlocking materials and sequential printing arrangements. Material interlocking is a very useful feature for tool changer and multicolor printers because using different materials in the same print, in the same print job, uh, can be difficult. This is more of an issue with layer adhesion because PTG and PLA don't really bond that well. That itself has uses, as you can see in uh, our video on the AMSs right over here somewhere. But if you have a print job where you're mixing PLA and PTG or other dissimilar materials, or even PLA from different brands that have not the best layer adhesion, interlocking materials can be a really useful feature. Sequential printing prints each object separately and in sequence, ensuring that the print head does not collide with already printed objects. Now this is useful for multi-part prints, as there are less travel moves, less Z hops, less stringing and less chance of artifacts from one object's geometry affecting another object in the same print job. It could also save a whole print failing when one object fails. Meaning this is really useful if your printer doesn't have object deletion built into it. I guess this would also technically mean you can print a VAS mode for multiple objects in the same job without fear of a collision. Now there are currently limitations for this. It is only available for Prusa printers right now as the algorithm depends on the specific geometry of the printhead, but we're all hoping this will be available for other printers really soon. And of course, Prusa acknowledges the work already done by Ultimaker and Orca as these already have a similar feature to material interlocking built into them and also to Microsoft for open sourcing the algorithm used in sequential printing. Lastly, in Prusa news, they also just unveiled Prusa Connect. <laughs> This is a feature built into printable, so it's browser-based. You can use it on your phone, on your desktop, on a tablet. But what you can do with it is you can connect via your own printer. So you download the model from printables and print it via the browser. And it's not just automatically generated G-code like with Maker World. You can select whatever profile you already have on the slicer. Want to add multiple files to your build plate? You can because there's a cart option. Simply select what you want, select your profile, change whatever basic settings you need, like infill, layer height supports, you can rotate it, position wherever you want on the build plate and print. And as long as you have internet access, you can do this wherever you are in the world. Provided your printer's on. Okay, what else? So we are getting the Elegoo Centauri carbon and regular Centauri. And these are very cool because of the price. That is pretty goddamn cheap. I've just started testing and so far it Looks pretty good. We're getting really good results on a printer that only costs 350 euro. It's very similar features to the X1. I don't know how they're doing this. What I really like is the build plate. It's 256 by 256. And sometimes I can be a bit critical of manufacturers copying each other outright. However, when they copy each other in the right way, it can be pretty cool because the Centauri carbon build plate and the X1 build plate, they match. And that is really cool. They're not the same form for aesthetics, but they are swappable. You can use them interchangeably. I like this. And we will be doing a full product breakdown in the next few weeks, so tune in for that. Now, next up is Benchy news. So you might remember some weeks ago, uh, Benchy remixes started disappearing from printables. Uh, as it seems the company who owned the copyright to Benchy had wanted to limit its proliferation in terms of derivatives. 
Benchy always had a no derivatives license, but it was never enforced. It seems the company who owns the copyright were not actually responsible for the takedowns, but noticing the impact the removal had on the community, they have changed things a little, and Benchy is now back in public domain. So import the 3D Benchy into your CAD program of choice and start remixing it in sick, twisted ways. Next up is Thingiverse News, and they have added AI labels to their things. You might have noticed over the last, not even a year, that you might see these beautiful renders on Thingiverse and printables and Maker World and such. Uh, and then you click on them and you go to the 3D view and it looks like crap, like awful, like it was scanned with a potato. AI is getting everywhere and we think it's okay until it isn't. It's misleading and it's irritating and it's filling up the new arrivals area like gunk in a shower drain. Nobody is enjoying this. As far as I know, Thingiverse is the first model hosting site to provide users with a filter to filter out AI creations. The only issue here is that creators have to mark their creations as AI created. Will they? I don't know, because those renders seem very sus already. However, Thingiverse have also created a feature that allows you to report a model that is missing the AI label, so that's good. To filter out AI creations, you just need to go to your settings and select the filter. Easy peasy. Okay, lastly, Tinkercad expands its design capabilities with a sketch workspace. So if you're a Fusion user or a, a different CAD user, uh, you're probably familiar with the sketch feature. So with this, you just really draw a shape on an axis, extrude it along that axis, and it creates a 3D model based on that 2D sketch. And if you wanna change it, you can do another sketch on a different axis and change it that way. This is basically the way all 3D models are created in CAD, and it's a very useful and powerful feature. Tinkercad, however, is a very, very basic CAD program. Normal CAD programs can be intimidating and expensive as well. So having Tinkercad, which is very easy and free, is a great way to start your CAD journey. Tinkercad, however, does lack some of the functionality of other CAD programs like Fusion. Obviously, it's supposed to be simple, but adding the familiar sketch tool to get started with your models is awesome for beginners. I, for one, think this is very cool. Okay, that about does it for this month. As always, links to all of the stories are linked below in the description. And wow, we got through a whole community news without ever talking about Bamboo Lab. Yeah. But I guess referring to Bamboo means we did just talk about them. And I did reference Maker World. Ah, fuck. Anyway, if you didn't know, we have our own Discord server, so if you want to talk about any of the news stories that we brought up today, you can do so there. You can also bring up your own news story if you wish, and if you want to talk to us, we are there every weekday as well. We'll be back with a new video in approximately tomorrow. So until then, happy printing. Later.